Today's episode will feature graphic and explicit descriptions of financial self-harm, because we are dealing with yet another Mark Bannerman episode. It's well known that Mark Bannerman, being one of the, uh, the most credulous and easily confused conspiraverse personalities, finds some of the most desperately pathetic people to interview, and presents their terrible plight as if it were some kind of noble struggle. That is what is going to be happening here. And if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, now would be a perfect opportunity to look away. And today's recommendation is Kitten Lady. She is a young woman from America who rescues even the spiciest of kittens and nurtures them back to loving, socialized, good health. What an excellent woman she is. You could watch a few episodes of Kitten Lady in the time that it would take you to get through the horrible story that I'm about to present. So if you're still with me, if you're the sort of person who enjoys watching other people's ignorance and misery, then uh, I'd like to introduce you to Christabel. With this promissory note, um, you put the amount over here in numbers as well as uh, words. Astute viewers of Mind of Steel will almost certainly recognize the document in Christabel's idiotic hands. That is Peace Officer Davy's promissory note template. And we covered Peace Officer Davy way back in episode 67 last summer. And he is one of the, the most unsavory conspiracy theorists that it has ever been my displeasure to communicate about. Uh, it is his proposal that you download his template, print it out, and then fill in your personal details, such as your name and address. And then you write both in numbers and in letters the amount of money that in your wildest fantasies you wish this piece of paper would be worth. And it is Peace Officer Davy's belief that upon delivery of this document, it magically transmutes into literally that amount of money, despite appearing to the uneducated eye to be the exact same piece of paper that it always was, literally having less value than a normal blank sheet of paper because it has been ruined by printing this idiotic design onto it. It's a strange belief that could only be believed by some of the most credulous and gullible nincompoops. And I think we're about to reveal that Christabel is indeed within that category of person. My first journey with promissory notes started, I'd say, in 2021. Um, unfortunately for me, I wasn't very careful with keeping my paperwork together and um, organised. The promissory note, it, it tells you about the bills of exchange here at the top under Lord Denning. A promissory note is cash and cash is a promissory note. Lord Denning said that. Nobody should take that as advice. That's bad advice. Advice delivered by an idiot who can barely read the text that she is claiming is an authority. But the only person stupider than Christabel, the woman who is about to lose her house, is the man who is making this video. And of course, I am referring to Mark Bannerman, the preposterous, pint-sized provocateur, the man who likes to stage all kinds of confrontations with car park attendants in order to make uh, the most perplexing of points that perhaps only he understands. That Mark Bannerman. The Mark Bannerman who selects the most pathetic and wretched of ignoramuses and celebrates them as if they were wise geniuses. That's what he's doing today. And we can see the, the comical depth of Mark Bannerman's tragic misunderstanding. The year was 1969. Judge Lord Denning, Master of the Rolls, said, we have repeatedly said in this court that a bill of exchange or a promissory note is to be treated like cash. It is to be honoured unless there is some good reason to the contrary. There's a pretty good reason to the contrary. A reason why no financial institution, in fact, no sane person on earth, would want to receive payment in the form of Christabel's self-signed promissory note. And, and that is that we all know that she's lying. We know that she does not have 
£85,000. We know that even if she did have even a fraction of that amount of money, she would not pay it. This entire thing is a scam. It's a dodge. It's a way of trying to evade a debt that she owes. And that's all it is. A promissory note, of course, is not cash. It's just an acknowledgement of debt. It's the equivalent of an IOU. That is literally all it is. And for all the typography on this ridiculous document that Peace Officer Davy has concocted, it is obviously utterly worthless. And the only person who seems to have not got this message is Christabel, and of course, Mark Bannerman. They're into this. They believe that they've found a fantastic way to evade literally any debt or financial obligation. And why do you sign it in blue? Because you are a class as a living woman or a living man. All right, so if you signed it in any other color, like black, for instance, Yes. What would that mean? That would mean you are, what you're saying is you're corporate. It's easy to get caught up in the sheer ridiculousness of the sovereign citizen movement. This twaddle about the colour of the ink. It's clearly nonsense, but this is just world building texture. Little details to enliven a collective fantasy universe. But it's not really what the sovereign citizen movement is about. And that's always been precisely one thing. It's always and only ever been about the evasion of responsibility. It's grown men and women who want to behave like children, who believe that they shouldn't have to pay bills and taxes, who believe that they do not have to repay debts or any other kind of financial or contractual obligation they don't like. That is literally the only thing that the Sovereign Citizen Movement stands for. So for three years, did you pay your mortgage? No, I was on a repayment mortgage, so technically I should have been paying off quite a bit of it. Christabel knows that she has a mortgage. She borrowed money from a bank in order to buy the house that she and her three-legged dog are living in. And yet she decided not to pay that mortgage. And the reason she decided not to pay it was because she had been studying at the uh, financial education school of Peace Officer Davy, a man who lives hand to mouth and is constantly running away from bailiffs who are seeking to repossess his residence and property. That is not the sort of person that any sane person should seek to emulate. But who said Christabel is a sane person? She clearly is a profoundly unhinged person. And the only person who seems to be even less sane than Christabel is Mark Bannerman, because he is seeking to emulate this. He sees what Christabel has, and he wants more. I sent uh, a promissory note um, in relation to my mortgage, so that I could clear, my, uh, clear the amount of my mortgage. Mark Bannerman wants us to believe that Christabel is the victim. She is apparently, according to Mark, the victim of this vast and complex web of financial fraud in which poor Christabel has been caught up and is now facing eviction through no fault of her own. Uh, that is how Mark Bannerman wants us to see the world, when everybody else can see that precisely the opposite is true. Christabel is a woman who signed a mortgage agreement and then based on financial advice from possibly one of the most idiotic people on this planet, she decided that instead of servicing those mortgage payments through the normal means of making a monthly cash or bank transfer payment, she decided to try and settle the entire thing by writing one of these ridiculous promissory notes. She believed entirely erroneously that a piece of paper with a few printing and scribblings on it would be worth £85,000. A, a truly preposterous idea that could only have formed in the mind of a true ignoramus. Filled it in with following the instructions, sent it to the CEO as instructed so that they could take it out of the treasury and um, then I waited. Christabel's bizarre notion that 
the entirety of her debt would be settled by the British government's treasury department. That seems to be a thing that she has dreamt up entirely by herself. It doesn't seem to be a thing that uh, I've ever noticed the likes of Richard Vobes and Peace Officer Davy claiming. A truly bizarre claim. And I wish that you could plead insanity in a civil court case. Unfortunately, you can't. I think that would be proof that Christabel is not compus mentis, not in a fit state of mind, somebody who perhaps deserves to be placed in some form of sheltered accommodation for her own safety, because she is a profoundly witless fool who is so easily led astray by her own bizarre fevered imagination. Nothing came back, nothing was returned back to me to say um, it was not accepted. As far as I was concerned and I was told, it, you know, it was accepted as cash. Do you get the impression that Christabel might not be the most diligent person when it comes to opening and responding to all those bills and final demands that must stream through her letterbox on an almost daily basis? She doesn't seem to be very engaged with the whole financial process that she seems to have gotten herself into. So she concluded on the basis that she was unaware of anybody complaining about her behaviour, that her behaviour must have been perfectly correct. A completely unhinged jump of logic that could only make sense if you are as deep in the, the world of conspiracy truthers as Mark Bannerman is. I got a letter from uh, Halifax basically saying I owed them 26,000 at the time or um, and so evidently she did receive communications informing her that her attempts to pay off a mortgage with a self-signed promissory note were not accepted by this particular lender and nor should it be because as we have previously established it is ridiculous. I, I think the only fact that we can establish in this particular scenario is that Christabel paid absolutely no attention to the correspondence that was gently trying to nudge her into making the right choice until it was far too late, until the possible opportunity to correct the situation had long since passed. Then I got correspondence basically last year to say um, I was being taken to court for uh, pos possession. Let's just hope that Christabel was referring to repossession and not possession, because I don't find the explanation that uh, her acts of financial self-harm were motivated by um, some kind of malign demonic entity that may have possessed her mind briefly and caused her to say and do these foolish things. Although possession could also refer to possession of powerfully hallucinogenic substances. And what you're about to hear is going to be one of the most truly mind-bogglingly trippy things that you will ever hear in your entire life. And that's quite a strong statement coming from me because today I just re-listened to the entirety of Gong's Radio Gnome Invisible trilogy, said to be one of the most hallucinogenic works of music ever committed to vinyl by any musician in all of human history. And that is as nothing compared to what you are about to hear from Mark Bannerman. If I pay you a £10 promissory note for a ham sandwich with mustard on it, when I receive the ham sandwich to eat it, that is when the debt is created. Therefore, you only get the true value of the £10 at a later date when you return back to me for the X amount of silver or gold that is supposed to back its alleged value as stated by the bank. Gong released the album Flying Teapot in 1973. That was the first album in the Radio Gnome Invisible trilogy, which many people regard as being perhaps uh, the best period of Gong's work. The albums in that trilogy provide a sort of um, jazz, fusion, psychedelic space rock combined with a, a, a strong narrative thrust, which is funny and surreal. The, the story tells of Zero the hero, uh, an everyman who is unsatisfied with his life on Earth, who meets the 
pothead pixies, the, the creatures who pilot the teapot taxi, who transport him to the planet Gong, where he begins to have his third eye opened and, and becomes a more enlightened individual. This process continues. The story is told in Angel's Egg, the second album of the trilogy, also published in 1973. They were busy psychedelic musicians. Two albums in one year, and such great albums as well. The, the story continues with um, Zero the Hero meeting the Octave Doctors, who present their love projectors, and the titular Angel's Egg. The trilogy concluded in 1974, with the album You, which in my opinion is musically the best of the three albums. Uh, it shows Gong at really their, their finest. Uh, this now deals with the culmination of Zero the Hero's spiritual journey. He learns of universal being and uh, the consciousness that ties all together and experiences a sort of ego death as he witnesses the interconnectedness of all matter in the universe. Uh, a story that I've summarized because I think it makes more sense than how Mark Bannerman believes the financial system works. What I'm basically saying is a psychedelic band from the 1970s who are celebrated because of the nonsensical, surreal nature of their, their narrative thrust, their story makes more sense than Mark Bannerman. In order to get the value of the silver or gold, somebody handling the promise to pay would have to go to the bank and cash in the promissory note. This would then settle the original agreed debt created with the promise to pay for the ham sandwich with mustard. Now that you're familiar with the history and the mystery of the planet Gong, you should be in a position to answer for yourself which of these works of creative fiction are more likely to have been produced under the influence of a powerful hallucinogenic drug. Was it the trilogy of space opera psychedelic albums recorded between 1973 and 1974, featuring the protagonist Zero the Hero's cosmic journey of self-awareness and uh, oneness with the universe? Or was it Mark Bannerman's rather feeble attempts to describe how the financial system works, in which he explains how you might pay with money for a ham sandwich. Ask yourself which of those made the most sense. And, and now, further to that question, which of those philosophies is more likely to produce a correct understanding of one's obligations when it comes to paying things like bills? and regular monthly mortgage payments. The, the odd thing about it, from what you just said, is you mentioned £26,000 they've asked for, mm -hmm. but yet three years ago you wrote uh, an amount for 83000 Yes, So I if did. you haven't paid anything since then, why haven't they asked you for 83000 instead of 26000 I don't know. That's a bit strange. Perhaps the biggest irony when it comes to the do-your-own-research crowd is how uncurious they can be when it comes to information that uh, they don't wish to receive. In this case, the bank has calculated the amount of money that Christabel owes them. And Christabel doesn't seem to have the, the faintest clue as, as to how they've reached this number. The, the idea that uh, the amount of debt owed might be compounded, well, that doesn't seem to have occurred to her. Uh, she has never even heard of this term. In fact, she is living in a, a dark ignorance that uh, could only be rectified, I think, by uh, encountering those pothead pixies and perhaps going on a journey to the planet Gong. I, I wish she would, because it might squeegee her third eye open, and uh, from that we would uh, perhaps all benefit. If there were fewer people who were locked into their bizarre mundane ignoramus worldview, we would, uh, we would all be much happier. Um, but I don't think either Christabel or Mark Bannerman are going to take my advice. They're not going to listen to this uh, sublime trio of 1970s jazz psychedelia albums. And uh, she is too busy wallowing in her own and Mark Bannerman's ignorance. You have followed the promissory note route. Yes. And you thought you'd paid it off. Yes. Because you thought you owed them money. Mm -hmm. They obviously ignored you and come back to you. But all you're asking for now is just proof. 
of playing. Yes. Um, and then you can take that to the next level. Yeah. And paying them, perhaps, like you just mentioned. Yeah. And that... with another promissory note, perhaps. Mark is such a spectacular ignoramus. He, he doesn't realise just how ignorant he is of the way things work. In this case, he's suggesting that Christabel might have been completely ignorant, unaware of which company loaned her the money that was used to buy the property that she's living in, uh, forgetting that this is just a matter of record that anybody could look up. All the, the court will have to do is inquire with the, the land registry and they will see that uh, the, the actual owner of the house, until that mortgage is fully paid off, will be Halifax Bank of Scotland, the institution that did in fact give her the money that would allow her to, to buy the property. This sort of feigned ignorance is how we know that she's just a dishonest woman. She's a liar and she will be exposed as a liar when this matter goes before the, the county court. It can't be any other way. Uh, but for now, she can comfort herself living in the, the bizarre fantasy that uh, Mark Bannerman is trying to, uh, to weave for her. And if they can't obviously present those documents you signed, then are you actually paying the right person? Or should it be someone else taking you to court? Someone yeah. who allegedly you yeah. owe money to? Yeah. And I suppose an appeal would be right now for the real person who you owe money to would be... To come forward. ...with the contract. Christabel is a terrible liar. Literally nobody would fall for that utter nonsense that she's trying to convince... Oh, nobody except Mark Bannerman, who is a profoundly stupid and gullible man who will believe anything as long as it's consistent with his uh, totally unhinged world view. But the rest of us, and especially the court who will be reviewing Christabel's case, the court that can take this video of Christabel talking utter nonsense and use it as evidence against her. In fact, I hope they do because she doesn't deserve to have a house. She's a liar and a fraud and a con woman. And people like that deserve what comes to them because they are dishonest, horrible people. And that is the kind of person that the New Age Conspiracy Truther Sovereign Citizen Movement celebrates. You are welcome to challenge this act, but the fact remains that you have received payment in cash and it would be fraudulent to deny this. I have retained photocopies and of the original promissory notes for my records. Please ensure that all enforcement consideration in this matter or action is ceased with immediate effect. Yours sincerely. The barrister in that courtroom is going to make mincemeat of her. They're going to present that statement and ask her to produce the photocopies that uh, she claims to have kept that she obviously didn't. We, we heard her admitting at the beginning of this video that she had lost all of the correspondence from the time she started to use these ridiculous promissory notes. Not that it would have really mattered, but it will show the kind of person that she is. She doesn't believe that it is necessary to tell the truth in anything. She, she believes that she can lie about all kinds of stuff. And just by saying the right kind of magic words, she believes that she ought to be entitled to get out of uh, any kind of consequences of her, for her own behavior. It's completely mad behavior. But she is a typical member of the sovereign citizen movement. She's no madder than the next one of them. They're all the same as Christabel. Very quickly then, your original promissory note was for 80? Um, it was, eight, it, to be honest, I think it was 80,000. No, right. yeah, 80,000. Okay, so taking that as a figure, did you ever receive that promissory note back? No, I never got it. I so never what do you think the bank's done with that? I think they've cashed it. If you were to attempt to cash one of Peace Officer Davies' promissory notes, the, uh, the present value of that uh, important financial instrument is likely to be less than one penny, no matter how much uh, the value that is written in pen, blue pen, on its front might be. No matter what number is scrawled in, no matter whose handwriting, these documents are utterly worthless. And uh, 
the notion that it could be anything other than that is a deluded fantasy that exists only in the mind of sovereign citizen truthers like Christabel, this deluded idiot who, by the time you watch this video, may already be homeless. I, I hope she finds somewhere warm because uh, I quite like her dog, even though I think she is a, a despicable fraud who has allowed herself to become deluded by association with uh, ridiculous nincompoops like Mark Bannerman. And, and Mark Bannerman himself is a, is a horrible person who is simply trying to take advantage of this poor deluded idiot to generate content for his failing YouTube channel, a, a channel which is not yet monetized, nor ever will it be because of the kind of conspiracy nonsense that he promotes. He's one of the worst people I can think of. But um, next week's show will be uh, probably a, a bit of a shock because I think I've found somebody who makes Mark Bannerman seem like a, a towering colossus of charisma. That's my claim. And I think this claim is at least as solid as the plot of um, that 1970s uh, trilogy of psychedelic albums that I referred to earlier. So that's what I'll be doing now for the, for the next few minutes. I'll be um, reviving my love of uh, 1970s psychedelic jazz fusion, as should you. And uh, uh, that is, if you didn't leave at the beginning to watch that Kitten Lady video, uh, a choice that I heartily recommend. And if you're still with me, if you didn't elect to watch videos about uh, young, fragile kittens being rescued by this uh, beautiful tattooed woman who has a, a, a spectacular way with the, those small furry animals, well, if you chose to stay with me, I congratulate you for your fortitude and your perseverance and your willingness to put up with clearly bonkers twaddle spoken by an ignoramus. And uh, if you're such a person, then you belong on my Telegram channel. Now, you may be asking yourself, what on earth is Telegram? Is it some means of communing with Planet Gong and the Pothead Pixies? Well, it's close to that. It is a um, communication service not dissimilar to WhatsApp that supports groups that you can search for and join in. My group is called Mind of Steel Chat. If you search for that on Telegram, you can join a discussion that is uh, only for the hardcore fans of uh, this show and also the, uh, the 1970s psychedelic band Gong. I expect both subjects to be rigorously discussed on that channel. So I, I hope to see you there. And if not, I will see you on this channel in exactly one week's time.